An established leader in the world of design, Stacy Garcia is a successful creative entrepreneur and founder of multiple business enterprises. With several commercial brands, Stacy is an internationally renowned designer and forecasting expert. She has partnered with some of the world's leading manufacturers to create products that span from floor to ceiling, including textiles, wall coverings, furniture, carpet, and accessories. Hey, Stacy, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. And thanks for the great intro. No problem. So honored and uh, glad that you're able to join us. Your story is amazing. When did you know what you wanted to do? You know, I think I'm one of the uh, ones that knew from a young age. I was always interested in art. Um, you know, some kids are very sporty. Some kids are academic. And I was always one that gravitated toward creative fields and creative things. And so I don't think my parents were surprised when I said I was interested in going to art school for college. So I, I really did know at a young age. I mean, I have memories of being in fourth grade and taking a class that they offered after school activity for making little furniture that you would put into a dollhouse. And, you know, I think I just kind of never looked back. It was always about being creative in the world of art and design. Awesome. What was your path like when you, you graduated college? Uh, take us take us through your the beginning of your journey. Yeah, so I sort of knew I was going to go to art school in some way, shape or form. I just wasn't sure just in case I got a little nervous about going to a school that only offered art. And so I ended up studying at Syracuse University. Uh, they have a great art program. And I found a major called surface pattern design. And uh, you can see one of my paintings actually behind me right now. Uh, this is not a pattern painting. This is more of a fine art piece. But at Syracuse, I was able to study this. I didn't realize up until that point that that was a career path, that you could actually go and study how to design textiles or carpets or any kind of pattern that would go into repeat and be applied onto a decorative surface. And I, I found out about it and, and kind of was just hooked on this idea of being able to create these designs for a living. So my path really started out uh, through the program that I studied in Syracuse as a surface pattern designer. And from there went to Ralph Lauren and was able to get an internship in Manhattan at the Ralph Lauren Home Division. And that was an amazing experience. I'm sure, so tell us about the internship. What did you find out um, that this is what you wanted to do? So, like, was there a certain aspect of the internship that drove you to a certain area of this industry? Or tell us about it. Yeah, I, you know, it's the internship was really great experience. There's a handful of companies, I think, that are really known for for sort of creating this transformative you know effect this sort of idea where they make magic you know they they create these worlds that didn't exist um, until they came up with them and put them together and so i look at disney as one of those companies with the imagineers you know they create these fantasy spaces mm -hmm. and ralph lauren was a very similar experience so you had this studio that was responsible to put all of these products together and all of the vignettes together and then would show them to the buyers that would walk through and the exposure to the level of detail that this group really created was amazing. So I had the opportunity to see, you know, some of the inner workings in their um, design studio, sort of see how they were organized and also see the level of detail. So when they would create a showroom experience, they were bringing in not only, you know, the people to hang the draperies, but they were bringing in the horticulturists so that if the theme was Irish cottage, they were importing mushrooms from Ireland and gluing them around the floorboards to really immerse the buyer into this experience, you know, really sort of transport you to the vision that they were trying to create. So that was just a great lesson, you know, to be exposed at such a young um, age, at such an early start of my career to how you can create this sort of fantasy world and really bring people in, immerse people in through the details of design. 
And the other thing I learned uh, at my experience at Ralph was this idea of licensing. So up until that point, I had not considered licensing. I, I really hadn't heard of it. I didn't know what it was. And I remember the senior designers talking about, oh, they just heard from a licensee and the licensee is asking for a black background on the fabric. But, you know, it was sort of this constant negotiation. And I remember saying, well, who is the licensee? Why does it matter? And they explained that the licensee was the partner that was helping to bring that vision forward. So at the time, Ralph Lauren wasn't directly working with factories. They were working through partners who would produce uh, the, the various products. And then Ralph Lauren would get royalties off of the products that sold. And so it was this you know, sort of business concept, too, that really planted seeds for how I was going to ultimately um, steer my own business. So it sounds like you learned a tremendous amount. Um, I had an internship in in high school, in college as well, and it put me on the path to you know su success and what I wanted to do. So the value of internships is so important, and I, I think like all of our kids can benefit no matter what industry they decide to go to for internships. And, I, you know, I think it's more than that, but certainly to have the ability to be a fly on the wall at some of these meetings um, made all mm -hmm. the difference. I learned so many great lessons uh, during that time, but I, I really believe that a lot of it is just what you're open to learning, sort of keeping your ears open, keeping your eyes open, keeping your mind open and being willing to ask questions and then consider the possibility. And that's really sort of, the beginning of any entrepreneurial journey, right, is to consider what is the possibility here. And I think I've always right. been really curious as a, you know, in my nature, I've always been a lifelong learner. And so that openness and willingness to sort of continue to question, consider to keep, continue to keep an open mind. I, I remember a conversation my grandmother used to echo back to me over the years as I was building my brand and building success with it, where she said, you know, when you were young, I remember going to lunch with you in the city while you were interning and you said, and I quote, hey, if he can do it, so can I, you know, why can't I do it? I'm going to do it too. And she said, you just knew back then that you were going to build something, you know, follow your dreams, build something on your own and, and really have, as she says, the chutzpah to go for it, <laughs> you know, to, to have that, yeah. you know, you're not going to be too afraid to just do it because you know what's the worst that can happen and so i really believe that that's always part of the entrepreneur's journey is keeping an open mind about things and going huh like that's something i never considered and i'm constantly being inspired you know even today by new technologies new things new ways of driving my business forward right so you you did your internship and your first your first job was where so after Ralph Lauren, uh, my first job was on uh, Fifth Avenue. So there's a textile building. There was actually two textile buildings. One has now been converted into condos, but there were two textile <laughs> buildings there. And I took a job at a company that was manufacturing. So I went from like this high-end luxury, well-known brand to um, really sort of uh, middle America, I'm going to say, catalog product. So it was another totally different exposure to what the possibilities were and where you could apply your talent and um, how you could make money in the industry. So I was I took a job designing at a company called Cadillac Curtains and Oxford Draperies doing um, patterns for drapes and curtains and some bedding that ended up in like Sears catalog and a, a company called Blair catalog. So, you know, pretty inexpensive and all had to be photographed so that the colors would pop off the page because that's how the consumer experienced it. But it was a great um, education as well because I was sent to the mills, I was going to the textile factories and really learning on the job about the technical process of producing the textile. So that was a great um, next step for me. And then from there, I took a job um, two stories up, I think. I went from the sixth floor to the eighth floor in the same building and took a job at another textile company designing for what was then dubbed their contract division, and uh, it, but primarily focused on hospitality, which is presenting fabrics for the hotels and resort market. 
And that's really, uh, that was it. You know, I was, once I sunk my teeth in there, it was like, this is the industry that I'm really want to continue to pursue. Excellent. Um, so I know you come from a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, was it expected? When did you know in your first two jobs that, you know, I think this is the path I'm going to turn down. And how did your, you know, how did your first business, your first entrepreneurial experience happen? I do come from a family of entrepreneurs and, you know, it's one of those things you have to be, I think, pretty thick skinned to go on this journey. So yes. anyone who is on it, you know, you, you understand it. Anyone who's thinking about it, you just have to be able to, you know, take a punch and get back up and take another punch and get back up because it's, it's not um, for the faint of heart. But when you grow up around it and you see the passion that comes from building something and you see the some of the flexibility that's built into entrepreneurship, um, it becomes one of those things that I think it's just, you know, we joke handed down from generation to generation. So, um, you know, even from my grandfather's generation, you know, everybody's always sort of been in their own business in my family. My brother and my sister are also entrepreneurs. So it's definitely something that was in the ethos, right? You talked business over dinner and you just heard things that maybe you wouldn't have been exposed to otherwise. So I don't remember a point in time of ever saying like, oh yes, you know, I know I've made the decision. I think I just always pictured myself having my own business. It was something that I knew I would do. Um, I knew I wanted to work in the industry. I wanted to get experience. I didn't have like a plan where it was like, oh, I'm going to do this before a certain age. I just knew that it wasn't if I would go into my own business. It was really a matter of when. And so mm -hmm. I incorporated Libatex, which is my first company in 1999. And I kind of wasn't sure what I was doing with it yet. I just knew I needed to open up a business entity because that was the first step to take. And I actually um, remember back, I was working in uh, Rich Loom and, and their contract division, you know, as their lead contract designer. And I was traveling around the country with some of our reps, creating the collections for them, going out and getting feedback on them, meeting lots of designers, making presentations at Marriott Corporate and Hilton Corporate and Hyatt and all these big hotel brands, you know, seeing what their prototype rooms look like. It was amazing exposure. And while I was doing that, I started to take night classes at FIT. They actually offered a class called Going Indie, and it was really short for Going Independent and started, you know, from scratch, sort of what's the difference between an S corp or a C corp or a sole proprietorship. Um, the internet wasn't what it was today. You know, today you probably go online, Google it, and Google tells you what to do. <laughs> so I remember taking, you know, just the, trying to fill in the blanks on the things that I didn't know. Right. You know, I didn't know what I needed to do first, but I knew that I wanted to do it. And so a lot of it was just taking the next action step. So in 1999, I incorporated Libatex and ended up using it as a freelance vehicle for the first two years uh, when I went off on my own and then ultimately uh, parlayed it into a textile company that I'm still running uh, 22 years later and we sell fabrics to the hospitality industry so definitely stayed within that wheelhouse of creating designs and textiles that get hung in hotels and resorts all over the country that's great and you know that that's you offered like a good piece of advice in the beginning there by you know going out and taking a course to learn things that you don't know what you don't know right and you're always learning every day and I'm constantly watching videos or reading or listening to podcasts to try to gain information on topics or areas in my field that I, I don't know. So, yeah, that's yeah. great advice. It is. And the other thing I like to do is I like looking at other industries, too. So I find mm -hmm. that some companies get really stuck where they're only looking in the small, you know, ecosystem that they're in but I find a lot of inspiration in other types of industries. So right now I'm sort of really interested in, you know, the metaverse. I'm really interested in what is that going to become? You know, how is that going to impact design? How is that, you know, are, are people going to want to have 
digital homes that they're, you know, decking out or digital hotels. Um, so, you know, just really trying to look at other industries and how they do things uh, to gain inspiration and, and stay ahead of the curve. Yeah. And, you know, what what the, the next advancement of all of this is designing people's uh, or, or companies network, their, their television or their Internet network. Um, and th that I think within the next five years, whatever type of business you are, everyone's going to have their own network and it's going to have to be branded. It's going to have to have color schemes and logos. And I'm not just talking like website because it's all content that needs to be created. And uh, that's like another avenue that's not even explored yet. Oh, yeah, the whole thing is changing so fast. Um, I had my first experience with the Oculus headset in a VR uh, world. Have you done that yet? Yes. It's crazy. <laughs> it's totally <laughs> It'll make crazy. You sick. I know, but yeah. it was really amazing because it sort of tricks your brain. So, you know, right. I was trying to explain it to people saying, you know, we're all on these Zoom conferences all day long and we're in front of our screens and you know where you are, right? You know you're in your home office or your office and your brain doesn't think that you've left the house. Um, when you put right. the headset on, I attended a virtual networking event um, for my industry. And I felt like Excellent. I was in the room with people. So, you know, I came back to my team. I said, oh yeah, I saw Jill, I saw Jennifer, I saw Donald, you know, I saw all these people. In my head, I saw them. You know, my head, right. we were all interacting, walking through the space, so it was wild. I mean, you know, that's where, as a designer, I'm just, I'm excited because there's always something new. There's always, you know, new trends that are happening, impacting the way people need to live. I mean, I don't know, maybe we'll be designing, you know, VR rooms for people in the future. Totally, without a doubt. Um, so what led you to um, Stacy Garcia, Inc.? So Stacy Garcia, Inc. was a fun um, jumping off point, I guess, very much like you're in the TV world and they'll do spinoff shows if something's hot. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I did a spinoff company. So I had been running Libatex for probably two years, and we had gone to market under the trade name Stacy Garcia, which had a blue label. We're calling that Stacy Garcia blue label now. And I was at trade show two, year two into it. And I had a large company called Hunter Douglas who makes all the window coverings. They were in a merger and acquisition mode and they had approached me to see if I was interested in selling Libatex to them. And I was in my 20s at the time and I was like, you know, really cocky. I was like, you know, hmm, I'm not selling this. I wanna see, you know, what I can do with it. But they sort of persisted in saying, well, let's have a dialogue and see how we can work together because your brand has traction. I mean, there's people here, there's people interested in it and we want a piece of that. And so what I ended up doing was spinning off Stacey Garcia Inc. as a second business venture in order to protect the intellectual property. And so we've now taken that company and really grown that into a licensing business. And so what you were just seeing was some of the rugs that we have but we've we licensing everything now from the, in that company from floor to ceiling. So Stacy Garcia Inc. holds tr several trademarks. Um, two of them are more commercial and hospitality, sort of to the interior design trade. And then I have two that are more consumer facing uh, brands. And so we're designing everything from textiles to wall covering, carpets, furniture lighting, um, whatever you would need to put into an interior and really trying to build out that whole lifestyle story, that whole Stacey Garcia aesthetic um, with our various brands. And so that's been so fun because it really was a way for us not only to protect the intellectual property that we had built, but it gave us permission to go out and design other things. You know, all of a sudden we weren't just um, pattern designers, we were product designers. And so it was a transition from uh, two dimensional to three dimensional. And uh, who knows what the future is going to hold? I mean, you know, I see the potential for fashion collaborations and all kinds of fun things. Absolutely. Um, tell us about your QV, your appearance on QVC and how did that come about? Uh, how was how that for business? 
That was great. I mean, I think it was really good from a recognition perspective, you know, to be on TV. Uh, every time QVC streams, they're tuning into about, I think, 18 million households that get those channels. So that was pretty amazing. Um, I have a funny story, actually. I was one of those. I don't think most kids dream about being on QVC. So I, I think that was like kind of a weird thing anyway. But I had insomnia in high school. And back in the day, as you know, because we're from about the same generation, there wasn't 24 hour streaming content like you can get now, you know, on your phone on whatever right. device you want. It's, it's nonstop. So at the time, you know, you'd kind of click through the cable channels and uh, there was a limited amount of things that you could watch at three in the morning. And I remember clicking through and just watching QVC like fascinated by this, you know, wow, look at these people. They <laughs> go on air and they're paid to sell this stuff. I mean, what a cool job. And so right. it was one of those things, again, in the back of my mind that I remember being like, maybe I'll do that when I grow up. You know, maybe I'll be someone who can go sell things on QVC. That seems like a really fun career. And so even though I got there through a different channel, it was such a great opportunity um, to get partnered with them. I, I had a, an introduction really into the buyers group through uh, an industry contact and made a presentation to the buyers about a brand that we were creating called Stay by Stacy Garcia. And because we had 20 years of experience designing product for hotels and resorts, I created this concept of, it's a great play off my name, you know, the idea of Stacy or stay, but this, this idea that you can stay comfortable, stay relaxed, create like a staycation in your home and the buyer at QVC loved the idea. And so we uh, made a contract with them that they would hold the license and we would create home products together under the Stay brand. And Excellent. so I did that for about two years with them and uh, the product sold out. So it's not available any longer, um, but it was a lot of fun, you know, a lot of work uh, to be on TV and a lot of fun at the same time. So that was really kind of a dream come true, as goofy as that sounds. But, you know, for me, that was uh, a really cool milestone. And doing it really, it was pretty amazing, opened a lot of doors for me with other brands and other opportunities. So it's like anything else, you know, gaining that credibility does help to continue to sort of build momentum moving forward. Right, right. Um, so just some entrepreneurial questions. Uh, do you have a business coach? I have had several business coaches over the years and um, use them for various things. It, it's, it has been helpful to have people to lean on um, with different things. Right now, I actually took on a coach to help us with licensing. So as much as it's mm -hmm. our core business, I know the plans we have are to grow it into a global brand. And so while we do have product that's distributed in 52 countries, what I find is that most of that distribution is through the trade. So it would be through, again, through hotels and resorts that are putting our carpets or our wallpapers or furniture into their properties. It's not a consumer brand yet uh, internationally, mm -hmm. but that's my goal. And so we've, we're working with a coach right now who um, has developed out other large brands and you know is helping us to create the move forward plan. Yeah, I, th I think it's so important. I've had several coaches over the year and it, over the years, and it's just whether you need help with something specific like you do, or for me, it was just kind of like opening my mind up to what I'm truly capable of. It's I think it's yeah. so important. It's great. The other thing I've done, which I really loved and, you know, will plan on getting back into it, but I had done a mastermind group as well. Yeah. So different than coaching, but you know, you're in a room, it was, um, I was in one that was women entrepreneurs, but there's all kinds of mastermind groups. And so there were usually six to eight entrepreneurs at a time that were part of the group. And we used to meet monthly and then everybody would have a spotlight session. And so you would bring your goals or your challenges to the group. And you get this kind of, they call it the mastermind. It's the group think. It's, yeah. you know, all of these people who are working on your problem together, um, opening up doors for you, introducing you to people, giving you good ideas on how to navigate uh, business challenges. Because as an entrepreneur, it can be a very lonely journey if you don't have yes. those kind of uh, support systems. Yeah, I, I've 
gone to several entre- uh, masterminds and I- I've learned so much from each each of them. And then I went to an entrepreneurial weekend of about 80 entrepreneurs from around the world. And some of it was, it was ru- largely run by ex-military, but all the lessons mm. that the military teaches are also were spun into how you can uh, use those lessons in life and business. It was amazing. I might need the name of that. That sounds like a really good yeah, one. It, it was great. And then we got time with uh, Deidre Koulian, who is, uh, you know, owns a franchise and Dan Fleischman and just like personal time on to ask as many questions as you want about you, your business. So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Do you have, uh, are you a mentor to other people? I am. And, you know, I have nothing formal. I'm not, you know, running a coaching business, but it's one of those things when people do reach out, I, I try to say yes as often as possible. It's interesting because not that many people I find are bold enough to even make the ask. And it's Mm -hmm. a really good reminder on the other side of the table that, you know, a lot of people think about it or they wish that they could ask the question or they wish that they could get, you know, a half hour of time or an hour of time. But most people are too afraid to even ask. They're too afraid of the rejection of the no, that they don't even go for it. So it's, it is a good reminder. And, you know, we've we've asked bold asks of people too, and many many times have gotten yes, um, probably more often than not. And so, it, you know, that's a good reminder too. So yes, the answer is I do uh, mentor people and stay in touch with them and try to you know coach them Excellent. because I had so many people come before me who were willing to invest their time uh, and their knowledge in me. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I know you might have just touched on it a bit, but uh, any f- plans for expansion uh, besides what you had just mentioned? Yeah. So, you know, you were asking about kind of how Stacey Garcia came about. It was the spinoff idea. We have grown it into multiple brands. Our latest thing is just about a year old. So uh, we actually just launched Shop Stacey Garcia. And so as we've expanded from hospitality into the consumer market, we were getting asked from people, you know, they'd see our Instagram, where can I buy that? What a pretty rug or what a pretty pattern. And we were always saying, you know, unfortunately for years, we didn't sell to consumer for years. It was like, well, if you want it, you need a hundred room hotel and then you too can have that share, but you need a (laughs) hundred of them. So there were always high minimum quantities. Um, So this was a really fun opportunity to expand as we developed out product beyond the things that QVC had exclusively to really start to build a shop off of it. And so, you know, the the shop StacyGarcia.com became a place for us to put together some of our patterns that we were designing. So we have peel and stick wallpaper that we create. We have a rug line. Um, You can see that's me on the bench there. So that's the peel and stick behind me, the lighting that's there as part of our collection. We sell, you know, accessories, everything from like those cool, you know, little sculptures to artwork. And so it really became a blank canvas. It was a lot of fun for me and our creative director and our team to say, you know, it doesn't all have to be product we've designed. I mean, we love great design too. And so we really were given the opportunity to act as merchants as well and be able to put together a grouping of product in the Stacey Garcia aesthetic. And that really is what we call modern eclectic. So I always come at things through a modern lens. You know, I like things contemporary, but I also am inspired by so many different things. So I love travel. And so you see all of these different layers that show up in in the collections and in the designs, um, including some one of a kind pieces. So that's been a lot of fun. And every week, you know, it's like I'll be uh, whatever sitting at the dinner table and my Shopify app will be buzzing. And I look at my husband, I go, we got a sale. You know, it's very exciting (laughs) when people you don't know um, transact with you. And I remember this was getting coached from my younger brother who has been selling uh, as part of his business. He sells books and courses that he's written uh, very specifically to um, I want to say civil engineers, you know, so he has a very, very targeted audience. But he had said to me when we were getting this off the ground, you know, just wait. At some point, you're going to 
do an order with a stranger, you know, somebody who you've never met. So it's not like a friend and family who knows you and loves you and trusts you. And you're not on QVC's platform where the people know QVC and trust them. This is going to be someone who just loves your product or loves your story. And they're going to transact with you. And you're going to be so excited when that happens because you'll know that you've struck a chord and, it, you know, and then it'll, it'll build upon itself. You know, more people will find you, more people will see what you're doing. And um, he was right. So, you know, when we get those, I get so excited every time to see, you know, it's a new person who likes what we're doing. It's a new person who, you know, trusts us enough to put their information in there and um, be part of, you know, using our design or using our products in their home. So that's always uh, such an honor. So that's really what we're working on right now and uh, going to continue to, you know, put a lot of uh, love and energy into that venture. And um, we have some new products too that we're rolling out. So I'm, I'm really excited. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed and praying, but we're launching a uh, case goods furniture line. So that should go to the retail buyers. Uh, they'll be showing that in October. And so that hopefully will be at retail at some time in 2023. And that's going to be collections of dining room sets and bedroom sets and just really beautiful furniture that uh, we worked with a company called Klausner and they are having it all manufactured uh, right now. So I Excellent. actually should be seeing the prototypes of that soon. So that's really fun. Well, best of luck with that. And um, how can our audience get in touch with you if they are interested in your products or just, you know, want more information about what your business does? Yeah, so I'm on um, all the social media platforms under Stacy Garcia Inc. And there's no Ian Stacy. And also check out shopstacygarcia.com. And we're, you know, there's always new updates, new inspiration. And the goal with this whole shop was to give a curated experience. You know, there's a lot of large marketplaces out there. And to somebody without a design background, it can be very overwhelming. Um, to even somebody with a design background, I can tell you, it can be very overwhelming. So we really wanted to do a shop that was highly edited and just curated and you feel confident that it's been chosen by designers. And so that would be a great place to contact us there. And um, there's a, a contact button right at the top. So we, we Excellent. do answer emails. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, best of luck with everything. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us on our last show of the season. So we're very Well, grateful. thank you. I'm honored to have been invited. And it's so fun to be able to share my story and, uh, and hopefully inspire fellow entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you again, Stacey. Thanks, Howie. Bye. Well, again, thank you to our guest, Stacey Garcia, for today. And contact Veridity Entertainment Services, VES, for any of your live stream or production needs. The team at VES has 25 years worth of production experience. Feel free to contact them, and they'll walk you through the entire process. Again, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next season in a few weeks with some brand-new shows.